Whether you're going to college or in the electrical engineering field, or maybe you're just having fun with resistors, one thing you're eventually going to run across are complex circuits made up of parallel and series resistive or reactive components. There may be more than one power supply in that circuit which interacts with one another, and you'll need to find out how much current and voltage are applied to each resistor in order to find out the power dissipation, which will affect the size of the resistor. For example, I put together an audio dummy load that I needed in order to troubleshoot guitar amplifiers. There are four 8 ohm resistors within, and through some clever switching, when plugged into one of three jacks, these resistors can be put into a series parallel combination of impedances providing 4, 8, or 16 ohms. However, by putting these resistors in different combinations, their power rating needs to be taken into consideration, as one resistor may get hotter than the others. In this video, we're going to go over how to take a slightly more complex resistive circuit and simplify it in order to find the total current, independent branch currents, and move on from there. I'm Derek, this is DC to Daylight, now let's look at resistor combination circuits. At this point, I'm going to assume a couple of things. One, you're familiar with Ohm's Law. If not, you can click on the link up there and you can learn all about it. And two, you've done some basic algebra. I mean, if you've used Ohm's Law previously, then you've already done basic algebra, so great. Now let's start with dusting off the old brain cobwebs and using the water analogy. If we force a current through a resistor, in this case a valve, and the valve is open, the current sees a low resistance and subsequently a low potential difference, i.e. voltage across its terminals. Now if we tighten that valve, we increase the resistance and not as much current flows. However, the potential difference in pressure across its terminals increases. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage is equal to the product of the current times the resistance. If we put two valves in series, one somewhat open and the other nearly shut, the resistance is simply the sum of the individual resistances. Pretty simple. Important to note is that each valve or resistor experiences the same current flow, but a different voltage drop across each valve or resistor. If we put those same two valves in parallel, the current is split between them. Obviously, the larger valve opening, uh, the less resistance, the more current will flow through that valve. By how much is related to the ratio of resistance between each branch. But if we look at the formula for resistance, where the resistivity of the material times the length divided by the cross-sectional area, we see that if we put two resistors of equal length in parallel, the cross-sectional area increases while the length is held constant. So just looking at that formula, as the area increases, the resistance decreases. So there's an inverse relationship there. Another thing to note is that parallel resistors see the same voltage across them, but may see a different current flow depending on their resistance, pretty much the opposite of series resistors. Now let's make things a little more complicated. This is the kind of schematic textbooks and exams will throw at you. In this circuit, we've been given the resistor values, and usually we'll need to find the voltage across all resistors and the current flowing through each. In order to do so, we need to familiarize ourselves with some rules, as well as use deductive reasoning to narrow things down. So what are these rules? You may have heard of Gustav Kirchhoff, who happened to be a Prussian slash German physicist who came up uh, with some simple but very relevant laws that we use in electronics. They're known as Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. KVL, or voltage law, informs us that the sum of the voltage drops in a circuit are equal to the source voltage. Kirchhoff's current law informs us that the sum of currents entering and exiting a node must equal zero. In my opinion, it's better said that the sum of the currents in a parallel circuit equals the current entering and or exiting respective nodes. Now, if we have a bunch of resistors in series, we can figure out the voltage drop across a single resistor by using the voltage divider rule. The voltage, we'll call it Vx, is equal to the resistor we're interested in, Rx, divided by the total resistance. And then we multiply that ratio by the supply voltage. Here's a series circuit with a 10 volt supply. I have three values of resistance which happen to be equal. In this case, 3.3K ohms each. If I plug those into a formula, I get 3.3K over 9.9K. And when multiplied by the source voltage of 10 volts, I get 3.33 volts. Using Kirchhoff's voltage law and or applying the voltage divider rule, we can figure out the remaining resistors as well. But we need to keep moving on. But what if we have a current entering a node and it gets split across multiple resistors? We know that current takes the path of least resistance, so we know the current will want to flow in the lowest value resistor, but some current will also flow in the other legs. But how much? Here we have 10k parallel with 2.8k parallel with 1k. 
If we have a 25 volt supply and the total resistance of those all in parallel is 686.27 ohms, we end up with a total current entering the node of 36.43 milliamps. Let's say I want to find the current in the 2.8K resistor. Using the current divider and plugging the resistor value of 2.8K on the bottom floor and 686 ohms top floor, as well as subbing in the total current of 36.43 milliamps, we end up with about 9 milliamps going through the middle resistor. And we can find the remaining resistor's current by continuing to use the current divider rule or Kirchhoff or even Ohm's law and some more common sense but I'll leave the remainder of that exercise up to you. Anyway, now that we have a few more tools at our disposal, we can get back to the circuit we ultimately wanted to solve. The first step is to find the total impedance of the circuit. This will allow us to get the total current, which will help us solve the rest of this puzzle. For series resistors, we'll add the values together, and for parallel resistors, we can use the ratio formula, or uh, we can use the one over one over rule if we have two or more resistors in parallel. This circuit simplifies to R1 plus R2 plus parallel R3 and 4 plus R5. Now, if I were to substitute those values in, I could say that 150 ohms for R1, 180 ohms for R2, plus our 750 ohms for R5, and R3 and 4 parallel would be 1.485K, and then the total resistance comes out to be 2.565K. By using Ohm's law, voltage divided by resistance, we can find the total current in the entire circuit. So 25 volts, uh, that's our source voltage divided by 2.565K, gives us a total current in the circuit of 9.75 milliamps. If you recall from our series valves, the current experienced by all series resistors passes this 9.75 milliamps. So for these guys, we can just use Ohm's law to figure out how much voltage is dropped across each by multiplying the total current by each individual series resistor. So let's say VR1 is equal to total current times R1, VR2 is equal to total current times R2, and VR5 is equal to total current times the value of R5. Of course, this only works for the series resistors and doesn't work for the parallel portion of the circuit. In that case, we need to use KVL to find the voltage across the resistors of this parallel bit. So we can add up all the series voltages for VR2 and 5, and then we subtract that from the source voltage of 25 volts. The difference will give us the voltage across that parallel circuit. At this point, we can use Ohm's law to solve the current through each resistor. So let's just divide the voltage that each resistor sees by the individual resistance. Kirchhoff's current law tells us that the sum of these currents should equal the total current of 9.75 milliamps, which it does. And of course, the last thing we need to do and what we're most interested in is finding the power rating for each resistor. So we multiply the voltage column by the current column and we calculate all of those values. And there you have it, we've solved the complete circuit. All right, well, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys learned something about series and resistor combination circuits. You will, of course, run across this in university or college or actually on the job. So you will have to calculate voltage, current, and power rating for the resistor you select. Okay, so it's probably a good idea to keep this video, you know, around in case you have to come back to it. Anyway, um, I would love to hear about it if you did this in the actual real world, um, you know, applications like dummy loads or even a Wheatstone Bridge, which we will take a look at soon. Anyway, that's it for me. You can interact with me down in the comments or interact with me directly at the Element 14 community. The link is down below. That's it for me, and I'll see you next time.